Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Anthony Sequera, broadcasting from New York City, New York, this evening. This just in. The RFC 1918 addresses are here. These should prevent the end of the world as we know it. Okay, okay, don't freak out. It's current times. But we are going to talk about something from 1996 in this IT First Step. And it was in this year that RFC 1918 was first published. You've probably heard a lot about RFC 1918. There it is in all of its glory. And this was about the address allocation for private internets. And what is so incredibly great about this is... Well, two things. And, you know, we often think about the IP address shortage that we were facing when it comes to the modern Internet. And, yeah, that is definitely something that these private IP addresses, a great example is the famous 192.168 address that we see so often in our small office home offices. But the big thing actually that this document was dealing with and what they were most upset about at the time was the ever-growing size of the routing table. They were worried about the router horsepower at the time and the internet routers being able to deal with this massive database of addresses. They figured if they set up private use only addresses that this would be really awesome because they wouldn't have to advertise all of those private use only addresses in the global internet routing database and the routers would have a much easier time going about their life. So that gave rise to RFC 1918 in the past. And by the way, 1996, I remember it well. That was really when my career was getting supercharged in the world of IT. So that's a pretty important date to me. Well, as a IT first step person, you need to memorize these addresses. I'm sorry, there is just no way around it. The great news is the first address, the class A block that we have is so easy to remember. If your IP address starts with the magic number of 10, then it is a private address. They reserved that entire space from 10 000, 000 all the way to 10 255 255 255 as the 10 block of private IP addressing. The other one that's easy for us to remember is the 192168. So if it starts, notice 192168, it's private. Yes. And then the tricky one for us to memorize, <clears throat> excuse me, but it's not too, too bad once you get used to it. Notice it begins 172.16 and it goes to 172.31. So if you're in like an IT certification exam, look closely. If it begins 172, that doesn't necessarily mean it's private. For instance, 172.2 isn't private. 172.32 isn't private. So notice we really have to scrutinize that second octet in order to determine if we are dealing with one of these RFC 1918 addresses. And remember, this is a great area where flashcards can really help you out as you're studying. If you're looking at those addresses and saying, oh my gosh, how am I ever going to memorize those? Well, flashcards can really be a wonderful thing. You'll eventually have them committed to memory just because you are working with them so frequently. Now, how RFC 1918 addressing works, remember, is you have this little private, you know, corporation, let's say, or actually let's make it more realistic to all of us. This is your home. So there's your house right there. And inside your house, you have all of these gadgets that need an IP address. My goodness, your Kindle, your iPad, your laptop, your desktop, your smart TV, your Chrome gadget, your, uh, what is it, the Amazon Fire Stick, all of this stuff needs an IP address. In fact, with the internet of things upon us, we may have our lights, our thermostat, all that stuff wants an IP address. 
So all of those addresses can be in that magic RFC 1918 address space. And we have a router sitting on the edge. This has been provided to us, thanks to our internet service provider. Like oftentimes we get this bundled with television and this router right there at the edge, it is going to have a non RFC 1918 address on it. So it is going to have a global IP that is relevant for routing on the internet. And you guessed it, this device is going to do network address translation, taking the RFC 1918 source address and translating it so that it is our global IP address and we can communicate out on the internet. This RFC 1918 thing really did dramatically end up putting off the end of the world as we know it. And I feel fine. Yeah, so these addresses really did help stave off the real huge problem we were in, and that is the running out of global IP addresses. Well, I cannot thank you enough for stopping in and checking out this IT first step on a critical topic that you understand very early in your career, and that is the RFC 1918 private address space.